<clears throat> Riemann sums are a way of estimating the area under a curve, which is given exactly by the definite integral. But Riemann sums is how it was originally conceived, and how it's a good way to approximate just by using rectangles. So what uh, I'm getting at here is, say we had some function, and it looked like this. And we wanted the area under this curve from A to B. Now, this is not a normal shape in that we don't have any geometric formulas we can use to actually do that area. If we knew the function associated with this curve, we could do uh, a definite integral, for example. But, if we want to just approximate it by using Riemann sums, what we're going to do is we're going to break up the interval into a number of rectangles. However many that is, obviously if you did more, the approximation would be better. So what we do is we have a rectangle here with these widths, and we want to move them up to the function so that they're pretty close. So the thing is, you can do this in a multitude of different ways, um, but there's three main ways that you're going to have to think about for your class, which is either use the left end point, the right end point, or the midpoint. So if you do the left end point, what you do is, for this rectangle, the first rectangle I chose, its height is going to be determined by the left end point. So it's going to look like that, and it's going to be a little bit over the graph in this case. And for every other rectangle, you would do the same thing. You would start at the left end point and approximate by that, etc. If you did the right end point instead, it, you would just this first rectangle would now only be this high because we would be talking about from the right end point. And this one would only be this high. And you can see that our estimate would be under the graph in this case. And finally, you could do the midpoint. So let me show an example over here. This rectangle right here, what I'm going to do is go up to the graph at the middle and then um, use that as my height for the rectangle. So you can see by doing midpoint, I'm kind of going under and over the graph for each rectangle, but the midpoint is actually a little bit better of an approximation than left or right endpoint. So the last thing that comes through with this is how do we actually calculate what this area is? Well, there's a very concrete formula for this. So what you're going to do is first, you take b minus a over n. So let's think about what that represents. b minus a is the length of your interval, and we're going to call n the number of rectangles. So, the length of your interval divided by how many rectangles would give you the width of every rectangle. And keep in mind, in Riemann sums, you're always working with all the rectangles have the same width. So this right here is the width of the rectangles. So if you multiply this by the sum of all of their heights, that would be the area of this plus the area of this plus the area of this, and if you added them all up, you'd get your area. So the last thing we need to multiply here is by all the heights added together. And there are n of them because n is how many rectangles you have. So if you did this with two rectangles, for example, you'd have two very large rectangles. It'd be easy to calculate. Um, your approximation would be pretty far off. On the other hand, if you did 100 rectangles, every one of them would be really tiny. You'd have a lot of stuff to do, but it'd be a really good approximation of the actual area. So to actually calculate the areas, you need to know whether you did midpoint, left endpoint, or right endpoint. Because the height of that rectangle is completely determined by which, which one you use. So the way that is written usually is x1 star plus f x2 star, on and on and on. And what the star means is... It's just representative of whichever one you ended up picking. So if you did left endpoint in our example here, the first rectangle, the height of it would have been this, which is f of a. If you had done right endpoint, you would have done whatever this next point was. So let me give you an example of a breakdown here. Let's say we were going from 1 to 5, and we were using 4 rectangles. You can see here the way that I split this up, our rectangles are exactly one unit wide every time. 
So for the first rectangle, if I was doing left endpoint, its height would be f of 1. But if I was doing right endpoint, its height would be f of 2. And if I were doing midpoint, its height would be f of 3 halves, right in the middle. So you can see here is if you were doing right endpoint, you would count f of 2, f of 3, f of 4, and f of 5, and you wouldn't have f of 1. If you were doing left endpoint, you would do f of 1, f of 2, f of 3, f of 4, and you wouldn't have f of 5. And if you were doing midpoint here, you'd have to get the middle of all of these, which would be 3 halves, 5 halves, 7 halves, 9 halves. And these would be all of the x's you plug into your f to evaluate all of the heights. You add all of those up and multiply them by the width of every rectangle, and that gives you your total approximation um, in terms of the area. And this is how you calculate a Riemann sum. So many questions on your test are going to have to do with using the same approximation but doing one with left and one with right <coughs> uh, endpoints, for example. Or you might have one where you need to use, say, three rectangles and then do it again using six rectangles or something like that and compare it to the actual area. So remember that the actual area you would have to use a definite integral for, which we have uh, that topic in another video. But Riemann sums uh, is another one that you're going to have to usually do on your test in this class. <coughs>